Today, I wanna talk to you about growing your audience online without social media. And I also want to introduce you to something known as the treadmill effect and why you really need to avoid it at all costs. I will share with you a different way of creating content that will transform the way you think about growing your audience online. Then I'm gonna wrap this video up by showing you a quick thing to check to see whether you're currently missing out on this free way of getting more eyeballs on your brand. So to start out, I wanna know, does this sound like you? You wanna build an audience online, but it feels like you're shouting out into the great void and no one's listening. You're posting daily or maybe multiple times per day on social media, like Instagram, TikTok, whatever, trying to gain attention. But it feels like you're just drowning in a sea of voices and no one's really listening. And sometimes it feels like you can't take a day off without messing up the algorithm or risking torpedoing your engagement and metrics and visibility. And that might leave you feeling burnt out and stressed from having to be so on all the time. I know that's how it makes me feel sometimes. And you might be thinking, if this is what it takes to build an online business, then I'm not even sure if it's really for me. So if this is you, you're currently suffering from something called the treadmill effect. And yes, that's coined by me, I made it up. <laughs> but basically, if you're suffering from the treadmill effect, you're caught in this never ending loop of content creation that requires you to always be on and producing, uh, or else you're fearing that the fire is gonna go out of your business and you're gonna lose all of your momentum. And that's really a recipe for burnout and resentment in your business. And nobody wants that, right? Like, that's not the point of trying to build your audience online. But I am happy to tell you that thankfully, social media is not the only way to grow an audience online. There's another way to grow your audience that requires a very different type of energy. And I personally gravitate towards this type of content creation a lot more. It fits my personality, and I feel like there's probably other people out there in the same boat. So this is another type of content creation where you don't have to show up on video or stories or reels every single day if you don't want to. You don't have to come up with endless piles of witty, engaging content day in and day out. You don't have to bounce around pointing at words on your screen, and you definitely don't have to dance. And honestly, no shame if you love that stuff. I mean, it works great for some people, but it's not for everyone. And I'm sure there are people out there who are like, ugh, you can get found without that? What a relief. And yes, you can. So with this other method, you can be much more behind the scenes and still attract thousands upon thousands of people to your brand every single month. You could sit on the couch and create content in your pajamas all day if that's what you like. No video or selfies required. Instead, you can put focused, high-level attention into deeper pieces of content that really connect with your people. And you can spend your time answering questions that you know your ideal customers, clients, or readers are desperately looking for. And you can do all of this with the confidence that the content that you're spending this time on creating isn't going to get lost like a flash in the pan. It's gonna to continue to work for you and attract people to your brand for literally years to come. So what is this magical method of content creation and audience building? Any guesses? If you think you know what I'm about to say, type it in the comments and we'll see if anyone gets it. But basically, spoiler alert, this method is blogging. So if you said blogging, you were right. And before I go too far into talking about blogging, I think it's important that we start by defining what blogging even is, because I've noticed, yes, it's 2023 and blogs have been around for a very long time now, but still to this day, whenever I talk about blogging in places like my free Facebook community, the Unconventional RD community on Facebook, there is some confusion out there about what a blog is. So I'm gonna start out by telling you what a blog is not. If you're blogging intentionally as a business tool, your blog is not a glorified personal journal. I'll say that again. I think this comes from, you know, the, the origins of blogging oftentimes were things like live journal and places where you're just spilling your thoughts, right? But that is not what blogging is today. Not if you're trying to use it for a business purpose. A blog is not a stream of your thoughts for people to subscribe to and follow every week. And it's also not a place that you're just gonna brain dump whatever's on your mind at any given time. Really, a blog is not even about you. When you blog with business goals in mind, a blog is a place that you're trying to create 
where someone can go to find the ultimate resource on the subject that your ideal customers, clients, or readers are interested in. So your niche expertise, like you want your website and your content that you're publishing on your website to create this hub of everything your person wants to know about what you are an expert in. So for example, a vegan food blogger would aim to create the best place on the internet for people to go to find vegan recipes. A geriatric dietitian would aim to create the ultimate resource for people who are caring for the elderly and looking for trustworthy information. A pediatric dietitian might create a website for parents who are trying to find everything they need to feed their children under five years old and and on and on and on. Like, see how these examples are user-focused, user-benefit-centric? It's not a collection of your favorite vegan recipes or just a handful of tips that you've gleaned from working in long-term care or just one-off posts whenever you have the time with some information for picky eating. You've got to think bigger than that. You want to stand out and become an authority within your chosen niche and blogging with strategy and intention, i.e. creating a well-organized collection of super high quality uh, content that answers your readers' most burning questions and gives them exactly what they're looking for is the way to do that consistently over the long term. So bottom line, you can jump off the crazy content creation treadmill, cancel the treadmill effect, and hop on the slower moving train to long-term online business, business success. Because by creating content that you know people are looking for in Google, it just becomes a game of persistence and consistency. So basically what you'll be doing is mapping out the content that you wanna create based on your keyword research. So figuring out what people are searching for and finding those higher volume, lower difficulty topics you can write about, creating it with the right strategy and on-page SEO tactics so that it shows up on the first page of Google. And then you just have to keep doing that and watch all your hard work snowball until you've built something uber successful that brings you tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people to your website every single month. And then you can do with that audience what you will. So some things that people do include joining an ad network. And if you join an ad network, which basically means you sign up for a company that will put display ads within your content, those ads are then gonna earn you money. And you can expect to make at least $1,000 per month for every 50,000 or so monthly visitors you get to your website. So if you can get, say, 500,000 people to your website every single month, which is definitely possible after a few years, you could be making $10,000 or more per month in passive ad revenue for all that hard work that you already did years ago. And that that content's just really sitting on your website, bringing people to you every single month, and you're getting compensated month after month after month for the content you made literally perhaps years ago. Uh, It's just going to snowball and build. So this is one of those scenarios where you put in a lot of effort up front for low payoff initially, but then by the end, it's really not that much effort for the amount of compensation you're getting years down the road. So, and that's just one income stream. You could also create content that contains affiliate links and earn hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars every single month when people purchase products that you recommend within your content. And that's also a pretty passive income stream. So for reference, last year I made an average of $2,000 per month in affiliate income simply from recommending other people's products to my existing audience, which I mean, that's nothing to laugh at, right? Like, that's a pretty good chunk of change. That's great. Uh, You could also pitch yourself to brands to create sponsored content on your blog that features their products or services. It's not uncommon to get hundreds or thousands of dollars per piece of content, especially if you get a lot of visits to your blog and have a loyal following. And then you could also create digital goods, online courses, maybe a membership site, services, or group programs to sell to people in your audience. And these can all be super successful business models as well. When I ran a nutrition-focused membership site, I was able to quickly grow it to a $30,000 per year project, working on it just a day or two per week and without doing any formal advertising, thanks to the power of organic traffic. And then likewise, last year, my online courses brought in over $270,000 in revenue, and that's without spending one cent on paid advertising, 100% organic. So you could totally build in any of the income streams that speak to you. And if you want to know more about 
sort of the general blogging business models you might follow and the type of content you need to create for each of these models, check out my previous video on the three blogging business models. I will link to that in the comments below. But one of the keys, honestly, to having a successful online business is establishing that core audience that you can earn reliable money from online. You need eyeballs on your brand, essentially. And again, blogging with the right strategy, in my opinion, is one of the best ways to gain that audience. It's not a quick way to grow, but it's a slow, steady, and reliable way. It's a content creation that slowly builds. Rather than posting a zillion social media flashes in the pan and everything fizzles out in a few days and you have to keep up this like frenzied pace to keep your momentum, evergreen content creation, like blogging, doesn't have that. It's, it's not going to give you those quick like, oh, I got... 100,000 people to view this video yesterday, but rather you'll end up saying, oh, I got 100,000 people to my website this month from this collection of evergreen pieces that I've published over the last few years. So to wrap this chat up today, I just want to show you a quick way to tell if you are currently getting visitors to your website through search engines like Google. And if you are not, then this is definitely an area worthy of focusing your attention on to grow your audience and your bottom line. So how do you tell if your website is currently attracting people who search for things online? Well, honestly, the best tool is something called Google Analytics, but it requires some setup on your part on your own website. I do walk you through exactly how to set it up step-by-step step in my SEO Made Simple course. If you wanna learn more about my course, I will link to it in the comments below, or you can head to the website seofreebie.com to watch my free training where I walk you through the exact framework that I teach for growing your audience through blogging. But anyway, if you don't have Google Analytics yet, I do recommend setting that up as an important first step for every website owner. But once you have it set up, you can track exactly how many people are visiting your website every month, how they're getting there, and even what content they're looking at once they're on your website, which is obviously great information for any business owner. So let me share my screen with you and show you what the back end of Google Analytics looks like and how to figure out exactly how many people are visiting your website right now from search engines like Google. So I'm going to demo this with my old food blog that I haven't touched in literally five years, <laughs> actually six years now at this point. I think the last time I updated content on this website was 2017, so essentially six years ago now, and it's still getting over 100,000 people visiting the website every year. So that's an incredible testament to the staying power of SEO. So here I am, I'm logged into Google Analytics. This is the dashboard. And in order to see how many people are coming to my website every month and where they're coming from, I wanna go to the report section. And then within the report section, I wanna go to acquisition and then traffic acquisition. So I'm gonna click this. Google Analytics doesn't start tracking any data until you set it up. So if you're watching this and you have not set up Google Analytics yet, go do that and then come back in a week or so and then you'll have a solid week of data that you can then just multiply by four to estimate what your monthly traffic is like at this time. Um, but for me, I've had this set up obviously for years, so I have a good record of my traffic. So right now it's showing me people who have visited my website in the last 28 days. I'm gonna click the date and change it to the last 30 days and just take a look at my metrics. The number one thing I want you to look at is how many sessions you're getting to your website every single month. So sessions are basically people, uh, individual visits to your website. And if someone comes and visits your website multiple days, each time they come is a new session. Whereas for users, uh, this is not counting repeat visitors. So ad networks care about sessions. So how many sessions are you getting per month? You can see that in the last 30 days, just over 7,000 people visited my recipe blog that has not been updated since 2017, which I find absolutely incredible. And obviously, if I went back in and actually attempted to update and optimize that content, because a lot of what I posted here is before I knew about SEO, uh, it would be a much bigger number. And if you want to be eligible for ad networks like Mediavine, you want this number to be 50,000 sessions in the last month. So if you can get to 50,000, then you're eligible to apply and you can start earning $1,000 and up per month in passive ad revenue, just putting display ads on the content you've already worked so hard to create. 
And then the, the next thing I want you to look at to figure out whether you're currently capitalizing on SEO and getting visitors to your website from Google is this organic search section. So how many sessions out of your total every month are coming from organic search? And this is essentially how many people are coming to your website from Google. Yes, there are other search engines out there like Bing, et cetera, but Google's market share is so high. It's like over 90% of people use Google when they're searching on the internet. So this is mostly telling you how many people are finding you from Google. And if this number is currently less than five or 10,000, you are missing out on a huge opportunity. That tells me that up to this point, you haven't really learned SEO, search engine optimization, and how to get your website and your content found through search engines like Google. So just by learning this tactic, you can totally transform the way you grow your audience online, create an evergreen system for attracting people to your brand that does not require you to run on this content treadmill, right? So that's the first thing I want you to note. How many people are coming to your website every month from organic search? And if it's under 10,000, just know that you have a huge opportunity at your fingertips if you dive in and learn SEO today. If the number is above 10,000 and you're like, whoa, I'm pleasantly surprised. Like, I can't believe I'm actually getting that many people when I don't really know that much about SEO. Then, oh my gosh, if Google's already liking what you're doing without you intentionally trying to optimize, you are sitting on an even bigger gold mine because with just a few tweaks to what you're doing, you could easily double that traffic in just a few months time. Many students in my course have done so. That's really what I want you to look at right now. And then it also tells you the other ways that people have come to your website. Direct means they typed in your website directly into their uh, browser, or they bookmarked it and they came back. Or if you get a lot of traffic from Google Discover, that often shows up as direct traffic as well. And then you can see here organic social, that's people finding me through social media platforms like Instagram or Pinterest, or TikTok or whatever. And you can see that the number of people finding me from Google is like almost 10 times higher than social media. So again, just driving home the incredible staying power and um, audience size of people looking for things on Google. And just by understanding how to create content that matches what people are already looking for, you can get so much more out of your time investment for your content creation than you often can from social media. So that's what I wanted to show you here today. Let me get out of this screen and go back to recording myself on video. So basically, if you're not getting thousands of people to your website every single month from Google, you're really missing out on a huge opportunity. You have the expertise. You just need to get out there and show it off. Become the authority in your space that you've always wanted to be and do it on your own time with focused, introspective work that will build on itself for years to come and really make a difference in people's lives. And I'm really super passionate about this because I wanna see food and wellness professionals get out there and own the space on the internet that their training and their expertise really deserves. And I mean, when someone is out there Googling something related to your niche, you can and should be the one to show up at the top of the search results with the answers to their questions. And that is how blogging with a business strategy works. So your assignment today is to, number one, install Google Analytics on your website if you haven't done that yet. And if you've just set it up again, wait a week or so before you look at your stats so that you can extrapolate enough data to figure out what your average monthly traffic might look like. Then number two, I want you to go into that traffic acquisition section and figure out how many people are coming to your website every single month and how many of those are coming from Google or AKA organic search. Again, if it's less than five or 10,000, you are really missing out on a huge opportunity to grow your audience and your brand. If you're currently getting over 10,000 people to your site every month, you're just sitting on a gold mine. With just a few tweaks to your content creation strategy, you could see some serious improvements. And then of course, I'd love for you to pop on over to my free Facebook group, the Unconventional RD community on Facebook and share what you found because I really wanna see what people are doing out there and where they're at with growing their organic audience through Google at this moment in time. So you can just search for the Unconventional RD community on Facebook and request to join, it's 100% free. I will also share the link to that Facebook group below this video as well.
So I hope you have a great day and I can't wait to continue this conversation in my free group. As always, if you're liking this content, I would appreciate any subscribes to the channel or likes on the video. All of that helps me grow. Comments too, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Uh, anything you can give to help this channel reach more people is hugely, hugely appreciated. So thank you and can't wait to connect with you further. And I'll be back again next week with some more online business and blogging tips.